An abandoned business fire shuts down streets in northeast Bakersfield to look at the massive cleanup. Peace talks get canceled after a deadly weekend. How Trump's plan to secretly meet with the Taliban came together and fell apart. The tense search for missing crew members on an overturned cargo ship is over. Rescue teams now race against the clock to get them out of a sideways hole. Live in high definition from KVAK TV in Bakersfield. This is Eyewitness News at noon. Welcome into Eyewitness News. I'm Ali Triolo. We start with breaking news. Rescuers have made contact with four crew members stuck inside a cargo ship that overturned in Georgia over the weekend. The U.S. Coast Guard says rescuers drilled a hole through the hull of the overturned cargo ship Golden Ray and confirmed that all four missing crew members are alive. They're now working to free the group. Currently, 20 people have been safely removed. Over 600 foot cargo vessel flipped on its side of St. Simmons Island, Georgia, around 2 in the morning on Sunday. No word yet about what may have caused the ship to capsize. It could take weeks to flip over the ship, and many now worry what the environmental impacts could be. Search warrants were served Sunday morning to the owner of the California dive boat that was engulfed in flames last week. The Santa Barbara County Sheriff's Department says this is, quote, all just part of the ongoing investigation. There were 39 people on board that conception. Only five survived. All of them were crew members. Authorities say the rest of the people on the ship probably were trapped after the blaze blocked their only way to escape. Santa Barbara officials say the victims most likely died of smoke inhalation. The bodies of 33 people have been recovered, but one is still unaccounted for. Recovery efforts will continue after weather conditions in the area improve. The body of Sergeant First Class Ellis Angel Barreto Ortiz is now in the U.S. He and 11 other people were killed by a car bomb at a checkpoint in Kabul. The Taliban has taken responsibility for the attack. In response to President Trump canceling secret peace talks at Camp David with Taliban leaders and Afghanistan's president, we have Nicole Killian following up with details from the White House. President Trump took the world by surprise when he announced on Twitter that secret meetings with the Taliban and Afghanistan's president were off. The announcement comes in the wake of a Taliban suicide bombing that killed 12, including a U.S. service member whose remains were returned home Saturday night. We are absolutely intent upon ensuring that we reduce the risk that we'll have more folks coming back through Dover. In a statement, the Taliban says the canceled talks will damage America's reputation, unmask its anti-peace policy to the world even more, and increase its loss of life. Plans for the Camp David talks were tightly held at the highest levels, but even then there was reportedly some pushback within the administration about inviting the Taliban to meet with the president. I don't talk about internal negotiation or deliberations and who said what to whom and when. I've, I've honored that for two and a half years now. Uh, but make no mistake, we were very thoughtful. Uh, we thought about this a long time, and ultimately the president made the decision that this was the right place. Camp David is the country retreat where presidents have brokered some of history's most famous peace deals. But even members of the president's own party objected to inviting the Taliban just days before the anniversary of the 9-11 terrorist attacks. We're not thinking a lot about terrorism lately because we haven't had, a, thank God, a major attack on the United States. But that has come at the cost of having to have a forward deployed presence in, for instance, Iraq and Afghanistan. Secretary Secretary Pompeo says the president is still debating whether to follow through with an announced drawdown of forces in Afghanistan from 14,000 to 8,600 troops. Nicole Killian, CBS News, the White House. Kern County and Bakersfield fire crews are cleaning up after a fire in northeast Bakersfield. It happened around 6 this morning in an abandoned business near the intersection of Alta Vista Drive and Columbus Street. Multiple engines were needed to get the fire under control, and both streets were closed down while crews fought the flames. No injuries have been reported, but go to bakersfieldnow.com for the latest on this developing story. Sheriff's detectives are investigating a shooting in Bonfish. It happened last night in the 100 block of Pioneer Place. Deputies say they found a man shot in the chest. He was flown to Kern Medical. His condition is unknown at this time, and a search continues today for the shooter.
Now to our south as fire crews are making progress on the Teneha fire. The brush fire has burned nearly 2,000 acres in the Murrieta and La Cresta areas in Riverside. Cal Fire says it is 90% contained. When the fire started last Wednesday, it threatened as many as 2,000 homes. Mandatory evacuations were put in place but lifted Friday morning. The fire is expected to be fully contained by the end of this week. Coming up next, for right now, we're going to have a look at that forecast. Aaron. Well, let's focus on our wildfire danger here, Allie, and I want you to see this. So our update here is that today we are going to see some concerns around our own Kern County Mountains. As you look over the Kern River Valley and some of these mountain spots, desert locations, the danger starts to pick up this afternoon, 5, 6 o'clock, and it really begins to peak again tomorrow afternoon, same timing. You see the concerns uh, picking in these mountain areas. and has all to do with the wind. Our wind forecast highlighted here, we see it ignite as wind speeds go up to 30, 40 miles per hour eastern Kern County just in the next few hours. And then if you move on into tomorrow afternoon, what happens? We die out overnight and then tomorrow afternoon flare up again because wind speeds will pick up. What we have coming in is not just wind, but it's out of the northwest. Positive news, it's carrying cooler air. So we'll see temperatures in the 70s and 80s. So fire danger is somewhat high because the wind speed's picking up. But the temperatures are righteous. They're great. 80 degree temperatures at the Kern River Valley. Just remember, the wind speed's up around 30 miles per hour this afternoon. As for uh, Bakersfield, 86 today is where we're headed with those windy conditions. But the reality is, is how long can these 80s last? I'll show you coming up in just a few more minutes. Allie. Aaron, thank you. Congress is back for the fall session today, and their to-do list is growing just as campaign season approaches. Pressure is mounting on Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell to address gun violence, election security, and other issues. President Trump hasn't fully explained what he'd like to see Congress accomplish, particularly on gun control. That leaves McConnell mainly focused on confirming the White House's administrative and judicial nominees. A new CBS News Battleground Tracker poll shows a shuffle in the top tier of Democratic presidential contenders. Ed O'Keefe is on Capitol Hill with the significance of these numbers. Hello, New Hampshire Democrats! Senator Elizabeth Warren earned an enthusiastic response at the New Hampshire Democratic Convention, where 19 presidential candidates spoke over the weekend. The new CBS News Battleground Tracker poll shows Warren edging out Joe Biden in the Granite State, by one point. Biden maintains his lead in Iowa and is blowing away the field in South Carolina, where he has strong support with African Americans. But in Nevada, Senator Bernie Sanders is now in front of Biden and Warren with 29% support. We've got a revolution to make. You ready to do it? The poll also finds that Warren is picking up the most support from voters changing their minds. For example, 29% of voters who previously supported California Senator Kamala Harris have switched to supporting Warren. It was a rough weekend for Harris, who had to apologize after a man attending one of her town halls called President Trump's actions mentally retarded. And she responded with, Well said. <laughs> well said. Harris later told CBSN's Caitlin Huey Burns she didn't hear the man's full comments. It was not something that I really heard or processed or, you know, um, or in any way condone, that's for sure. Meanwhile, former South Carolina governor and Congressman Mark Sanford announced he is going to challenge President Trump for the Republican nomination. And this is the beginning of a long walk, but it begins with that first step, and that's what I'm announcing here today. Going around Kern County now, how would you like to go to the Kern County Fair for free? Houch and Blood Bank is offering a deal you can't refuse. Just donate blood and win free passes to the fair for its seventh year. Houchin is hosting its annual Pint for a Pass Blood Drive. Donors who give blood will receive free passes to the fair. You'll also have a chance to win ride wristbands. So to get on the fair rides for free, just drop by either Houch and Blood Bank and give blood today through Wednesday. The Kern County Fair starts September 18th. Next on Eyewitness News, escaping the Bahamas. Thousands line up the beaches in the aftermath of Dorian waiting for relief. It's now time for recovery efforts as the death toll is expected to rise. 
Environmentalists are turning to out-of-the-box ideas to help save our ocean. How broken hockey sticks are being used to filter Florida's waters. Today's continuing coverage, this is the scene of much of the Bahamas. People crowd onto ports, waiting to evacuate the islands by ferry. Thousands of the people in the Marsh Harbor have been stranded in apocalyptic conditions after Hurricane Dorian hit. The government has warned the death toll will rise dramatically. Nadia Romero joins us now from the airport in Nassau, which has become ground zero for the relief effort. Colin Rose's catamaran blocking the road survived the storm. The main structure is inside here. This is superficial. The boat behind me was actually docked a half a mile away down this road on the canal. We've gone through six hurricanes already and had no problems. But this time around was different. Colin says he and five other people and three dogs fled to the rafters of his house from the rising tide for two days until his son arrived in a rescue boat. Memories of the storm still haunt him. Then we, uh, sorry. <laughs> Neighbors thought they were goners. A few people reported us dead, but we're all still here. This is what is left of it. Nothing more than a frame. Laura Jones's house in shambles. I just went blank because I can imagine I never thought it was like this. She tries to salvage anything that Hurricane Dorian didn't destroy. But there's one thing spared by Dorian's wrath keeping Laura going. Every time you look at this, what will go through your mind? In spite of everything, there's hope. You know, no matter how dark it is, no matter when I'm about to fall apart, I can look at this and realize that there's hope. In Freeport, Bahamas, I'm Nadi Romero reporting. More than 100 flights were canceled and 1 million households were left without power following a powerful typhoon in Japan. The typhoon made landfall early this morning and brought heavy rain and winds of 120 miles per hour. When the storm then moved over Tokyo, it paralyzed transportation. Major subway stations in Tokyo were crammed full of commuters on Monday morning, all stuck waiting for bullet trains and subway services that never came. Keeping an eye now on our local forecast, Aaron. Well, hey, everyone, Aaron Perlman, and I got to tell you, you know, uh, with our weather being so great, that really is the start of our forecast. The weather maker. Why are we so great in the 80s? It's the change that's coming. The windy conditions this afternoon, as we talked about earlier, gusts around 20 to 40 miles per hour, cooler temperatures, 80s. 80s till Wednesday. Let me show you. Here's the front. Here's the low associated cold front. We're watching this to move in behind it because it's carrying cooler air. 80s headed into Wednesday from this driving front. Watch it. Here's the future tracker. We watch this thing move further on, and it keeps the cooler air around through Wednesday. Once this exits, we're going to see this ridge develop, bringing hot weather going into the upcoming weekend. Now, after the weekend, cooler air will resurge. But till then, we're under the hot weather by Thursday. Before Thursday, it looks like this. 86 degrees for today for Bakersfield. Lamont, 88. Taft, 85. Delano, 87 degrees. Areas of Lake Isabella, the Kern River Valley, you're going to be running in the 80s today. A lot of sunshine. Just remember, it's windy today, as we mentioned at the top of this 20 to 40 miles per hour eastern Kern County this afternoon. Blowing dust possible, especially in our desert locations. You guys, still not quite as cool, still in the 90s. It's not triple digits, though. Attached to be 74, we're looking at uh, Stallion Springs over at 72. You can see temperatures over into the mountain areas for Fraser Park, 73, Lebec at 77. Great air quality today, tomorrow, and the next because of that front swinging by and temperatures correlating into the 80s next three days. After Wednesday, as I referenced, we will get hot again. Triple digits coming back into the forecast for this weekend, Saturday. Ah, bummer, but heat short-lived. Mountain areas in the 70s and 60s the next few days. Breezy, windy. We're going to see warmer conditions by Thursday, Friday, into Saturday. Uh, over in the Kern River Valley, Lake Isabella, 80s and 70s. Uh, but by this weekend, sunny and turning hot. So that's what you can expect. All right. Uh, Allie, I'm going to send it back over to you. I hope, I hope you like what you see.
I like today, Aaron. Thank you. Going across the nation now as researchers continue to look for unique solutions to Southwest Florida's water crisis, hockey sticks are now being looked at as an environmental savior. Brianna Ross gives us a look. These broken hockey sticks were once an environmental concern for the FGCU ice hockey club and water experts alike. They're a, a carbon composite material, so they don't break down easily. So you're throwing them in a landfill and they're just sitting there. But now FGCU's ice hockey club, researchers from Vester Marine, and the NHL's green initiative program are turning what was once trash into an environmental treasure. With these Lincoln Log structures tethered underneath uh, our local docks, oysters are able to grow all over this vast area. It's all part of the Rinks to Reef program, turning broken hockey sticks into artificial oyster reefs. Each oyster that grows on the artificial reefs can filter around 50 gallons of water per day, and each reef can hold an estimated 400 oysters. 20,000 gallons of water per day can be filtered when one of these is fully functional. Today, community members have joined FGCU students and staff to build even more. We wanted to tackle a project that was going to be important to the community as well as our neighbors, our customers, and our businesses. And what more is there than clean water? The project has even scored support from the Fort Myers City Council, who will spend $10,000 to build 44 of the reefs in city-owned piers. Councilman Fred Burson says he will also cover half the cost for people in his ward who want a reef on their own piers. Just done to encourage uh, all residents residents to do anything we can to uh, help clean the water in the river. And the program is just getting warmed up. NHL teams and hockey clubs across the nation want to join the effort to turn waste into a way to make our waterways cleaner. In Benita Springs, I'm Brianna Ross, Wink News Now. A warning for Disneyland visitors why you might need to make a visit to the doctor if you did an end of summer trip. In today's Health Watch, the number of pregnant women with high blood pressure has soared over the decades. Mindy Gaither has a look at the new study. Between 1970 and 2010, high blood pressure in pregnant women has increased on average by 6% each year in the United States. And hypertension during pregnancy affects black mothers at twice the rate of white mothers, according to a new study published in the Hypertension Journal Report. Researchers are hoping this information will be a step toward figuring out why there's such a disparity between races. The study suggests the rise in women waiting until they are older to have children may be connected to the increase in high blood pressure, which is the leading cause of maternal death in the U.S. Researchers studied CDC records on more than 151 million women between the ages of 15 to 49 who gave birth in a hospital over four decades. High blood pressure in pregnancy can lead to complications like preeclampsia, stroke, placental abruption, preterm delivery, or low birth weight for the baby. For today's Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. If you've been to Disneyland recently, a new warning for you this afternoon regarding a measles outbreak. State health officials are now warning unvaccinated people who visited the theme park within the last few weeks or should go see a doctor. This comes after a sick teenager traveling from New Zealand visited Disneyland, spreading the highly contagious disease. The FDA has warned e-cigarette maker Juul about illegally marketing its vaping products as a safer alternative to cigarettes. Federal law states companies must show scientific evidence before marketing tobacco products as a better option. Juul has 15 days to comply with the law or risk fines, seizures, or an injunction. The warning comes as more deaths are being reported among a rising number of lung disease cases in the U.S. that could be due to vaping. There have been five vaping-related deaths as the teen vaping epidemic continues to raise concerns in the medical community. A boy who used his Disney va vacation savings to help Hurricane Dorian evacuees got a surprise trip to Disney World anyway. 
Jermaine Bell story went viral this weekend. He used money he had been saving to buy hot dogs, chips and water for about 100 evacuees in South Carolina. Mickey Mouse took notice of his selfless act. Disney employees showed up outside of his house today and delivered the news of his surprise trip in person. Well, Jeremy and his family will visit the Orlando Park sometime later this month when he's not in school. Bell says he's really happy in that quote, if you do good things, you will be rewarded. NASA wants to send more women into space and they're getting some star power to promote their next mission. Take a look. We'd rather be on the moon tonight. Say hello from the control room tonight. Don't want gravity pulling on us tonight. Up here floating, we just feel so free tonight. Think we're better off roving on Mars tonight. No opportunity to go home tonight. Just making sure. In turns for the U.S. Space Agency remixed Ariana Grande's song NASA to help educate young people about space, as well as promote its upcoming moon mission. NASA says they're looking forward to sending the first woman and the next man to the moon by the year 2024. Pretty awesome. All right, next on Eyewitness News, we will have a final look at the forecast. We'll be right back. Welcome back into Eyewitness News. We are continuing to track your forecast. Let's get a look. You probably enjoyed a nice, cool morning this morning. You could see his highs in the 80s, but when it comes to Friday, looks like those temperatures are back up. Triple digits expected to hit on Saturday. For more updates on our forecast, you can go online to bakersfieldnow.com. We're going to head over to Fox 58. We'll see you there.